Were Could... you just calling me? By any chance? Yeah, I was gonna call you. Okay, we'll see. We'll see if this goes this time. Okay, so we're live. Um, let's start with your name and, and your your background again. My name is Jenny Jones. Um, I have a master's in mathematics. I have an MBA, and I have been working as a um, software engineer and manager for the past 15 years. Um, this year, I decided to take the plunge and start my own thing. I want to go into renewables, renewable energy. Um, but while I'm building that up, I have the opportunity to dedicate some time to projects that I think are interesting. And I saw um, the open source ecology, or saw, heard the open source ecology on NPR, thought it was fantastic, looked it up online, just thought the ideas are really great. Um, in particular, just the, the overarching idea that scarcity is created, you know, it, it, it's a created thing. And uh, then became a true fan, and then when I decided to do this other thing and kind of clear my schedule out. Um, I wrote Marchen and said, hey, I have some time. Um, you know, is, is there some way I can help you? And um, we originally I thought that I would come out there and just, you know, be an extra hand to work on things. And then um, Marchen had the idea that maybe I could help with technical recruiting. You know, I certainly have a background for that kind of thing. Um, at least in some ways, and um, this is just kind of blue sky in it. I'd, I'd really love to give some support while I have extra time. So that's kind of where we're at. How long are you gonna have extra time? Um, I well, so my <laughs> I've already got a, a handful of um, consulting gigs that are gonna take up the time that I had originally slotted for this, but I was thinking. I don't know, anywhere from a couple of weeks to maybe a month, um, if I could find the time to come out there. Um, but if we can find projects that are offline um, that can be done in small enough increments, then I could help some other way. When you, you say know? offline, do you so mean... So it's really... What's you, that? When you say offline, do you mean remote collaboration? Right. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you're interested in coming to Factory Farm for up to a month, potentially, and you're also interested in more of a long-term collaborative, remote collaborative partnership? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I just, I love the ideas, and um, yeah, I would love to help out. Okay, and you're willing to volunteer? Yeah. Okay. How many hours a week if you were remote? Um, that's a great question. Um, pro I, that's a great question. I don't think that on a weekly basis it would be reasonable. It would be probably better to chunk things out and say, okay, here's a bit of work. It will take you know a couple of days or something like that, and then I can fill in those days. Um, alternatively, if it's something as simple as scanning through resumes, then that can be you know a couple hours a week and on a cons more consistent basis, you know, because it's a smaller kind of, um, you know, it's executable in smaller amounts. Okay, so you're, you're, you're more interested in working on projects rather than just being consistently putting in time every week on a regular basis. Uh, well, I think that'll, it, it depends. If it's a small enough amount of time, then I could do it every week. Um, if it's not, you know, it just all depends on how the tasks flow, so. Okay. Um, can we talk about your skills some? Sure. Okay. H have you ever been trained or trained yourself in how to start a business? Um, I'm training myself now. And in fact, I've helped a number of friends start businesses. And, and the, the, the things that I can offer that are the strongest yeah. are around building business process tools that are with free tools, you know, like how to set up contact or writing calculators for ROI so that you can convince somebody of the value of something or, um, you know, doing copy or writing um, to help. The thing that I can do very well in terms of writing is that I can always bridge the gap between what the average person is going to know or understand the technologists, and then the business owners who are operating. And um, 
So at all levels, you need writing on those to bridge those three areas and to get those groups to be on the same page. And I'm very good at that. Um, that's been a lot of the industry experience in software that I've spent time on is um, documenting and writing, um, taking very technical details and distilling them into practical um, implications or directions. Um, that's 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 a great thing. But I'm also very good at writing calculators for people or writing, figuring out some way that they can use Office, Open Office or Microsoft Office, so that they can spend less time running their business and more time doing the things that they want to do for that business that made them start it in the first place. Um, would you be willing to make some video tutorials to demonstrate <clears throat> your workflow with with managing an office? Uh, tell me more details. What like are you for looking example, for? Are you like, looking for me? Or are you looking for like me and how I do things? Or are you looking for uh, you have a project? It sounds like you've got some solutions for how to set up the internal workflow of an organization using certain office related tools like calendars. And I mean, I don't know. I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but you've got some tools and processes for managing the in-house side of uh, of just the, the business related stuff so like for example with me I've got I use uh, Gmail and mm -hmm. with Gmail you can designate different star colors and types or little like labels for each email I've got my own system for how I label my emails on whether I've read it whether there's an action item whether I, you know just so I could make what I'm asking for you is if you have, it sounds like you've got different processes like that. And then Sort I'm, of. I mean, I don't have any pretty cookie cutter at this point. What might be easier is if you say, okay, say, you, say you've say you solved a problem you think well and you want, yeah. you want me to solve it. Or say you have a problem you haven't solved well and you want problem. I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have anything cookie cutter, you know? Okay. Uh, uh, for example, the calculators that I've helped people work yeah. out or I'm working on are things like, um, I have a friend who's a coach and there are various ways in different units that people take timing tests for running or swimming or biking and um, they need to be the, they need to be self-explanatory in how you load in the times and then get your chart for heart rates. And so there were some formulaic problems with how to lay out that data. And that's a sim relatively simple problem. Um, some other problems that um, go a little bit deeper are things like writing a calculator so that somebody would actually buy solar. I mean, right now at this point, the only the average consumer says, I'll go to a leasing company and have them put solar panels on my roof because there's no outlay. I don't, I don't have to put up any money up front. Well, clearly, if the business has a profitability layer, it's clearly cheaper for you to do it yourself. Why isn't that compelling? And the primary problem, it isn't compelling, is because nobody lays out, here's your, here's your return. Here's the present value of money. You're going to say you're going to loan or outlay some amount of cash and you can look at it over time and then how much money are you going to get back when you actually provide electricity to the city at a certain point of the day or use it yourself and you know with people comfortable with 30-year mortgages or even 45-year mortgages why or 40-year mortgages it, it's pretty clear how to make those calculators but nobody does it they they present them with you know all the fancy thought products that and tax credits, which, you know, dollar per dollar isn't going to get all your money back. So helping write those, you know, simple, pretty simple calculators, but presenting a compelling argument. Um, those are the kinds of things. Okay, uh, but about, I, I don't have any, I don't have any, you yeah, know, yeah, here's yeah. my... Okay, so here, what, what about calculating the, the cost of, a, of owning a product over its lifetime? I'm writing this down as something you want. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty clear. It just depends on what kind of product it is and what it gives back to you, if anything, um, and what kind of. You know, if you're talking about a car, um, you there's there's lots of costs associated with it um, over time, and you can't and it's depreciated, depreciated items, so it's not going to last forever. 
So yeah, you can put something together. I mean, right? like what I'm thinking is, okay, what's what's what are the advantages to people or the consumers? If they they actually build their own OSC tractor as opposed to going out and buying a John Deere tractor, because with the John Deere tractor, um, you have to pay someone else to repair it, and it's actually. I, just, I, I, this is actually one of the the reasons why I thought OSC was so cool was I actually passed along a couple of links to um, the farm. I'm in a CSA, and we have incredibly old equipment, and we're on this road with all of these farmers who pitch in to help each other do stuff and I was really hopeful that the board would consider actually building some of these tools in particular the tractor um, because they they don't have capacity as it is now thinking that the amount of money they're going to have to pay for a commercial tractor is so much well it's like well we, we could build this you have all the equipment you know between the between all the farms that share there's all the equipment required to build it I think so, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty clear. If you, I think the um, intangibles are probably some of the places where people would be most comfortable for, like, farm equipment, you know, like the, like the tractor. You know, you could say, you know, here's what's required in terms of skills. Oh, I know how to do that. I already, I already weld stuff. I know, you know, I already know how to put things together. So I think that's one of the most compelling things about the, products that you guys are prototyping you know they just don't cost that much um how are your research skills um i think it depends on the subject matter but you know pretty good i have i have a pretty good network of people to figure things out um it depends on exactly what it is um yeah what i was thinking is i mean i don't know if you're interested in this or not i'll throw it out there one thing, okay. one, like, one thing we'd like to do is analyze the, the cost of owning a John Deere tractor, including all the breakdown and repair costs, and then how, also trying to, trying to research how long those tractors last, like how many hours of operation, Yep. and then compare that to, I mean, we have to gather a lot of this data, but compare that yeah, to the GBCS. Yeah, I definitely go out and talk to some of my farmer friends about these specific things and then put out some kind of projection. Yeah, maybe not. I mean, that's probably a different... I Just personally, I wouldn't want to talk to a, tr a farmer. I'd want to see if there's someone who's already... any kind of like in-house analysis that John Deere's done and not just one tractor or a couple. That's more anecdotal. More, I'm talking more of a systematic systemic analysis of, of how their machines hold up in, in the real world because we're at the, we're in the age where that kind of data is out there but anyway I don't I'm what is just to gauge your interest how interested are you in something like that um, the, how you want to do it and how to start it but that would be pretty fun and it seems pretty small that so. kind of stuff could be really helpful, but I don't. I, okay, it's it's also not necessarily a top priority right now. I'm just trying to. I'm throwing it out there based on what I hear your skills are. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that would be pretty fun. Okay, because you've got the math. I mean, there, there's that's there's probably some statistics in that project, and then uh, the MBA. Um, have you ever written a business plan? Um, only in classes. Yeah, okay. I've never written one uh, just the, in the real world, and that's okay. a little bit different. Um, but you know, the same elements go into it. You have to, you have to pick a market. You have to size the market. You have to, you know, distill that market into some profiles of customers. Then you have to figure out how your product is differentiated, and uh, figure out what your product, how much your product really costs, including paying yourself, for example. Um, you know, the, the, you know, the, the type of analysis, analysis re required differs depending on how large the business is or, you know, what the resources are required for the business, you know, a 110 person billion dollar company is different from a 110 person nonprofit, for example. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, so Martian told me that he was interested in, in seeing if you're a fit for technical recruiting or just recruiting in general. Um, mm -hmm. 
Will you talk about your interest in that and what, what skills you could bring to the table for that? Right. So, so that's also fun. I've done quite a bit of that in the software arena. And um, um, I mean, we, we could obviously see if this worked out, but um, I feel like I'm very good at um, picking out people via how they write and how they phone screen. And um, I feel like those, I don't have to have specific skills in the area that is being chosen. And um, I'm also self-correcting, you know, like you get feedback, say you gave me a, say you gave me a drop of, you know, 50 resumes and I queued through them and picked out some and, you know, talked to them and said, okay, I think these are good fits. And then, and then we take them to the second stage where they actually talk with, actually talk to somebody who um, knows, has more details on how, what exactly they're going to do. And, you know, Two of them were good, and eight of them were way off. Well, we talk about how they were way off, and then I adjust, you know. And in fact, technical recruiting is more, I mean, I can see that as being something that I could do incrementally and more often, you know, because we'll set a process in motion that'll be the same, right? And so, you know, communicating back and forth about feedback for various candidates will um, get into a rhythm for the different classes of, of um, you know, or piles of jobs you're trying to fill. Would, so. you, would you be able to find candidates, or would you do it only if we sent you the potential candidates? I was thinking about that, and I think that um, I could probably help you find um, sources for people interested in these jobs. I mean, I obviously need a bunch more information, but, you know, like I can think of a guy I hired last year for a software job um, who's who's got a master's in mechanical engineering and um, super smart guy. And I'm like, you know, he could he could probably do some of these things. Hey Jenny, slow down. I, you're, I'm having static, so just hold up. Some still shining, otherwise it'd be pretty scared right now.